Hey Tribe family, welcome to Tribe Daily. Uh, we're finishing up um, First Thessalonians today. I'm pretty excited about that. Now, if you have not uh, looked at our um, partner email, there are some helpful hints for First Thessalonians for you. Anything, um, a website that we use a lot for our studies and for our preparation as we go into a new book of the New Testament is um, the Read the Bible or the Bible Project. Uh, if you Google that, you'll you'll come across a great resource that you need to know about. Um, in fact, let me look while I'm talking to you. If you pull it up, um, it is actually, I think it's the BibleProject.com. Yeah, BibleProject.com. BibleProject.com. And they have tons of informational videos for you. So hopefully after you watch this video, if you if you can do this, you can go to that resource. They have curriculums, but they have really well done videos to help explain and give you an overview of, a, of the books throughout Scripture. And then some themes that you'll find throughout Scripture. But 1 Thessalonians, great, great letter that Paul wrote to a church that he loved, um, that he had heard had been just loving others, living in the community, being a light in the community of Thessalonica, and uh, and just making a difference for the Lord. And, and here's what's crazy. is it's, it's not really crazy, but what's neat is it's almost as though they weren't like setting out on a mission to do that, or they didn't have like a big gathering and say, hey, how can we... How can we make such a major impact here in Thessalonica? No, Paul's just encouraging them because they lived the life of Christ throughout the city. They they worked hard. They they lived a peaceful life with people. They desired peace and to de desire to love and help others. It wasn't like they got together and put together this big event to try to make a major impact. I, this is the thing I want us to remember. Jesus made the impact with the event of the cross and the event of the resurrection and the event of him being seated as the king and everything. That's the event we look toward. The Thessalonians, or the Thessalon not the, the Thessalonians, what they did is they just lived their life. They worked their jobs. They raised their kids. They ate good meals together. They enjoyed the good things that God pr produced. And they made an impact in the city. All right. But they also made a stir because they were so free and they were so not stressed out and they were so filled with hope that here's the thing that's going to happen, though. There will be some people who will always oppose that because there will be people who always want you to be uptight just like they are. Christians, listen to me and students, you too. This is the answer. This is the solution to anxiety is to realize who you are in Christ and, and also to realize that in Christ, you will be everything that God said you're going to be. So just start walking in it. All right, so look at 1 Thessalonians 5. Uh, this is where we are today, and I want to just walk through some scripture and just talk you through it. All right, it's pretty simple. Hopefully you read. Uh, those of you who are watching this, thank you for watching this. Like and share if you would. As you're reading this, I just encourage you to slow down, read, and think about what you're reading in light of everything you read throughout the rest of the book. So it talks about here in 1 Thessalonians 5, the day of the Lord, all right? The day of the Lord, the day of the Lord. It says, now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need, look at that, you have no need, so stop worrying and stop trying to figure this out. You have no need to have anything written to you about that. Basically, Paul didn't break out a lot of charts and graphs to try to tell you what the day of the Lord was actually going to be and when it was going to be. He says, for you yourselves, you yourselves are fully aware. You're not uh, asleep in this issue. You are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. You know this. You don't, have, you don't need somebody to tell you this. You know this already. While people are saying there is peace and security, look, everything, we have the person we need. Then suddenly, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman. And they will not escape those things. 
But you, now Paul's talking to the church through this letter, now you are not in darkness, brothers and sisters, for that day to surprise you like a thief, or you are not in darkness. So basically it's like that day won't surprise you. You'll see it coming because you keep aware of the times. You know this because God is showing you. All right, now look at this. We are not of the night or of the darkness. So then, look at this. So then, let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, all right, we, are, we, we have the light of the Lord to shine and show us and to make us aware, let us be sober. Having put on, and he's going to remind you again of the armor of the Lord. Check this out. Having put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet of hope of salvation. These are the these are main things. For God has not destined us for wrath. Why? Now here's what's awesome. Here's the gospel. But to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, not by our works, not by anybody else's works, but by what Jesus did. And this is what he did. He died for us to that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, here, check this out. Because of all that, this is what we're supposed to do. Encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. Students, this is huge. As you live for the Lord, simply as you live for the Lord each day, as you as you live in the light, as you live in, in desire to have a life that's awake and aware, all right? Um, I think it's weird. No, I don't think it's weird. I think it's a plan. I think it's a scheme. It, there's a lot in this world saying, hey, just unplug, just veg out, just turn your brain off. That is not the life of a Christian. We are supposed to be aware because we are told to be aware, okay? And because we're being told to be aware, we <laughs> that's one of those indicators that we will be tempted not to be aware. There's a lot that happens around us, and we're not supposed to be stressed out. We're just supposed to be conscious of it. We also know because we know God is in control and God is sovereign and he does things the way he does things, we can trust that all things will go the way he designs them to go. And they will end up where he designs them to end up and he will use you and me to accomplish that goal. All right, so live freely, love others, forgive people who sin against you, uh, make new relationships and look at this, and last but not least, this is huge. Encourage one another and build one another up. If you are a person who tears people down, stop it. If you are a person who likes to be around other people who tear people down, stop it. Because you were not recreated to be that way. In Christ, you were recreated to be a person who builds each other up and encourage one another. And, and let me, final thing. This is one of the things that's so obvious today. There is so much today trying to tell you to focus on yourself. Live the selfie life, you know. Take a picture of yourself. What do you want to be? What do you want to portray yourself? But when you look at Scripture, the Christian's life was marked by loving and encouraging others. Students, how are you loving and encouraging and praying for others today? Who is the other in your life that you need to give some focus to today, all right, as you love and worship Jesus. Let me pray for us. Thank you, Lord, for this time in your word. Thank you for instructing us in your word and helping us to know that no matter what the seasons may bring, we can trust you and that you are in charge. Help us not to get caught up in how everything's going to end up. Help us to trust you as we trust you to bring it to where you need it and where you're going to bring it. We love you and thank you for this time in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Students, I will see you Wednesday in the JWAC, all right, as we look toward finishing up 1 Thessalonians and moving into 2 Thessalonians. I love you. Talk to you soon.